Hey guys, so this is going to be a turn-by-turn -turn analysis of a game that I played recently against Nigel Richards. Now, Nigel's considered to be one of the best, probably the best player in the world. He's from New Zealand. Um, he doesn't do interviews, which makes it so really hard to see much of him. <laughs> anyway, um, my strategy against Nigel is to keep the game as tactical as possible. Nigel has amazing word knowledge. He knows all of the eight, all of the nine letter words really, and even some longer words than that. And he finds them very, very consistently. He's not so adept, although he's perfectly capable of understanding some of the strategic aspects. Um, certainly probably in the top, I don't know, ten or so in the world at it. But I think I have an advantage there. Um, I don't know Nigel that well, so I can't claim to actually understand his reasonings or some of his decisions. I'm sure that some of the decisions that I wouldn't have made, he has very good reasons for. Um, but since he doesn't give interviews, it's really hard to really understand exactly what he's thinking all the time. Um, nevertheless, when I say some, when I say that I would do something, that doesn't mean that's necessarily the right play. It just means that from my strategic understanding of what you should do, and he's probably thinking something as well that probably makes a lot of sense. So anyway, let's jump right into it. Um, me and Nigel Richards, game one. So here's my first rack, C-G-I-O-R-T blank. Pretty good rack, um, to say the least. There are two bingos. Uh, I would never be playing Urgotic because Argotic is hangs an A out as opposed to an E, and your opponent can bingo through the E, so there's just no reason to ever play Urgotic. And the only real question with this rack is where to play it. And most people are going to play it automatically, just take the points. And they're going to play it here. And there's something to be said for that. It's more points than anything else. And, you know, points are good. But there's two problems. Uh, the smaller one is this double letter square. Allows you to make an overlap either here or here. Um, not really a big problem. A lot of people really overestimate this problem. It's not that easy to do here. I guess they could play jib over here. Play the J or the W or something. But I'm not really worried about it. Uh, the real problem I have is the accessibility of the board. And what I mean by that is it's pretty easy for them to play anywhere on this board. They can play up and down through the eye of the C, so they can play all on this side. They can make a parallel here, a parallel here, play through the A or the R. Basically this whole, every single quadrant is open. It's very easy to see them playing almost anywhere on this board. And when you're ahead by a bingo already, you know, I'm getting 70 plus, it's not a good thing. Especially with my game plan, which is to try to limit the options of my opponent, who's generally going to be finding all the words 100% of the time. So if you play Argotic here, then this whole area of the board becomes a lot less accessible. They'd have to play with the C or the I, and playing to these letters isn't really going to net them a lot of points very often. And even when they do, then they're going to probably have to either play through whatever they just played through or hook an S and then try to go across. And that's just, it's not a very good look. Um, you know, words do start with S a lot, but it's not nearly as dangerous as them trying to move this way. Um, on the same token, if I were to play somebody who I had better word knowledge than, I'd probably be playing Argotic over here. And that makes this whole area a lot more accessible. Just because bingos can fit over here, there's an R that fits over here that can be played through very easily. You can play through this A very easily and score pretty well. But that's not my game plan here. That's the opposite of my game plan here. So I play a Dargotic over here. So Nigel has D-G-I-O-R-R-T. 
and a lot of people like to try to play shorter here, like like to play three tiles off and try to bingo. And in some cases, it's a good idea, but this isn't one of them. Main reason is because of this R G O T I. So if you play off three tiles, then you're gonna have to keep tiles on your rack that are the same tiles on the board, and it's really hard to bingo with through a tile that you already have. So if you played like Grog, you're gonna have an open R here, an open T here, and an open I here, and your leave is gonna be D I R T. It's just not a very good op good option here. So Gordy is a much better option. Um, you know, it doesn't score that great, but nothing here does, and yeah. It does leave this I here, which isn't desirable. Uh, XI and QI can kind of ruin your day, but he's behind. You can't really worry about that right now. And there, like I said, there really just isn't any other option. So here's my next rack. It's A-A-E-E-I-I-N. Obviously not a very good rack. Six vowels, uh, duplicate A's, E's, and I's. I obviously have to get rid of some of them. Uh, normally I'd think about trading, but in this position it's a little bit too good to trade. Uh, certainly not a bad idea in general when you have these kinds of racks to be trading them. So I have really two options here. Um, play idea here. Keeps A E I N. A little few too many vowels for my liking. Um, you know, it's not the worst ever. A E I N is de they're decent bingo tiles. When you draw consonants, you generally draw pretty good racks. When you don't draw consonants, however, you generally have vowels, and vowels are never good. At least four or five, you know, four of them is kind of okay. If you draw two vowels in the next three tiles after idea, you're generally not in good shape. Uh, good news though is it does hit a lot of bingos and it does block this I, which is a bit of a problem. The other option is airy here, and it's a little bit less of a, you know, it's much better for the vowel constant ratio does leave this I open, uh, still does leave A-I-N, which you know I'd rather have two consonants and one vowel rather than one consonant and two vowels, but I mean, you have six vowels in your rack, what can you really do? Uh, leaves this A open, I'm not too concerned about it, it's pretty hard to score well using this A. Leaves this double double open too, but my opponent just used six tiles, they probably don't have a bingo yet. and. We'll probably both score pretty decently, and this will close down. You can't you can't live in fear of them drawing a bingo magically out of the bag when they just played six tiles. So both plays are pretty equal. I chose to do this. This is a little bit less entropic, and by that what I mean is that there's a lot less risk involved. I mean, unless they bingo this turn, it's not a lot of bad things that can happen. AIN is going to be pretty safe in terms of drawing really disastrous racks, and yeah. So now Nigel has D-E-L-R-R-U-Y, and he has quite a few choices. Um, the more common choices would be Guri here, Rudery here, Ruli, or Rudely. And they're all pretty close. Uh, the best offensive option is Guri, because it keeps D-E-L, that's the best bingo leave, can bingo here, can bingo here, can bingo all over the place really. Uh, gives me a lot of good scoring options here though, and doesn't score as many points as the other options. Uh, Nigel went with Rudely, um, normally this E would be really bad, but I just played A-E-E-I, and it probably means I have more vowels where it comes from. Probably something like A-E-T or A-E-N. In this case, I had A-I-N, which is maybe a little bit more scary for the E-E here. But I'm never going to have like a high point tile on my rack. And I'm generally going to have vowels, which is going to make the E pretty safe. So I think that's why Nigel went with Rudely. So here's my next rack, A-D-F-I-M-N-N. Um, this is pretty standard. I played Fend. Um, there's not really any other good options. Um, if you know the word Aidman, that's t three more points, but it keeps Fn as opposed to Am. Pretty big difference in leave. F isn't really all that good in general. Not any good on this board, especially. Uh, yeah, not really much to say here. Uh, Fend is 
I think, clearly the best play. So Nidal's next rack is A-A-O-R-R-X-Y. And he's down 73. Um, there's really only two options here. He played Oryx. I also think Array is an option. Trying to hit XI over here. Trying to open this the board up over on this side too. Um, they're both about equal. I'm a little surprised knowing Nigel's um, general play style that he played Oryx here. Because... Um, you know, XI, is a, XI and XU are a pretty big deal over here. He's going to get them fairly often. And he's going to get to open the board. He's going to get to play much more of a shootout when he's behind playing, as opposed to playing Array. I guess he doesn't really have the S hook, and he doesn't really like leaving all of this stuff here, leaving the N open and whatnot. But, I mean, if you knew what I had, I had MA here. I could cash it almost all the time here. But, anyway, he chose to play Oryx. So I have AEIJ MPW and up 40. Um, I just played Oryx. Kind of a little confusing. Um, not really sure what kind of range to put him on. Obviously he doesn't have an I. He doesn't have a B. He would play Borax. He, he wouldn't make a setup like that. It doesn't make any sense. Um, maybe he'd play Boxy. I, I really think he'd play Borax a huge portion of the time. Uh, he could have the last M. Not too worried about that. If he has the last M, so be it. He can cash it. But I generally think my M is good here. I think the you know having having M parallels going over here is generally going to work out in my favor. And I think if he plays doesn't have an M and parallels, I can parallel it over pretty lucratively. So I can score over here, but I think I'm actually better off leaving it alone because I don't think his range is going to hit that very hard. Uh, Nigel's known for playing a lot of setups, but this this just isn't really a good spot for it. He probably doesn't have, he's not making a setup here very often. Um, more worried about something a little weirder. Um, maybe he has the Q in his rack. That's a concern. Uh, especially since he just played off the X. Usually he makes some sort of setup with that, I think. Uh, but... You know, given my choices of what the threats are, I think that the that this isn't a threat, and I think that this line is potentially a bigger threat. So, you know, my choices here are playing Mew here or Ma here or playing Jeep, and I want to take that out the threat, and I think that the bigger threat is, yeah, the bigger threat is with this spot. I mean, with this whole area over here. So, I play Jeep. Expecting to probably be able to cash the M next turn if I need to or just keep blocking uh, Nigel has a a c e l o r he has acid roll on his rack um, There's not really anything to say here. He has caracal um, It's 64 points. It's not the greatest thing ever because of all this stuff that leaves open This is gonna be pretty lucrative, but he doesn't have a choice. He, you have a 64-point bingo when you're behind, and no other good scoring options. You have to take it. So I'm only up 17 here, but I don't think I have much of a choice here. Uh, I played Maw. Not really a lot of other options. Uh, I, you pretty much have to block this. Uh, it's just such a dangerous opening. This, this scores more than anything else, too. I have Oaf up here. Next play, probably. And yeah. So Nigel's down 62, and he has vowels. He has A I M N O O U. And there's a few options here. Um, there's Axiom over here, there's Moo over here, and there's Moon over here. And a lot of people would be like, well, why would you ever play? Moo, or why wouldn't you play Moo? You could also play Moa. Um, the reason why you'd actually add the N is because there's so many hook letters in the pool that they're going to actually have a lot more flexibility as to what they can play over here with you, with, with them being able to play the tile themselves. So if you play Moo or Moa, 
with T here, they can put an S here. Uh, with mood, they can put an R here. Well, there's only one R. They can put an N themselves. It's it's leaving them too many options. Whereas Moon actually leaving the N here reduces the options. And even though it's unintuitive, it's actually a lot better to leave the tile hanging in that triple alley because otherwise they're just gonna use one of their tiles themselves. Uh, I still don't think that Moon is as strong as Axiom. I mean, Moon is what? Nigel actually played, but it's certainly a lot better than Moo is. Um, I still would play. I still would probably play Axiom, however. But Nigel decided to play Moon. So I'm up twenty five, and Nigel just opened this end spot, and I have to block it. I can't really score very much anywhere else, so I may as well block it anyway. And there's basically three options. There's Fang. Fanga and Ganoth. And Fang's strength is that it doesn't really open this lane for triples, so it's a lot easier to block this R on the A off. Um, it's definitely worth something, but the ABIO leave is just kind of bothersome, even with the more constant heavy pool. Just not very good. Um, it's not going to score very well. I guess I have A, B over here, but I don't really want to open this up, even though I'm going to have to. I'd much rather be thinking about closing the board, and it's really hard to do that with A, B, I, O. Um, it's going to be pretty hard to close this board anyway because of the C and because of just, just how easy it is to expand this to this quadrant. It's pretty hard to close this quadrant in general, but I'd still, you know, I'd still rather close it, but it's... It's just not worth it to play Fang and keep that leave. I can play Fanga. It keeps a better leave. It scores three more points. Um, but this line's going to be miserable to close. It's we're just going. He's just going to keep playing over here. It's just going to be. It's going to be a nightmare to try and close the board after Fanga. Whereas after Ganoff, it's a lot easier. Um, yeah, he can bingo starting with an E and I or an O, but it's pretty hard to do that. If he can do that, he'll probably bingo somewhere else at least for a good while. You know, there's a blank out, there's four S's out. It's just going to be really hard to close the board permanently anyway. So, long term, I'd much rather play Ganoff. So, Nigel's down 55, and he has pretty ugly rack, A-E-I-L-N-O-U. And Nigel fishes, and he plays out. Now, he really doesn't have a choice here. I mean, I'm not, I don't think he's in love with this play, but there really aren't any good options. You could play Kowleen across here, but I mean, he's already losing and that's not going to help him. Uh, he needs to bingo. And there are four S's and there's four T's out. And, you know, if he doesn't hit one of them, he's going to probably be in a lot of trouble. I guess there's two B's, which don't work badly with his rack either. Two V's, but... You know, he's really, he really is putting the game on the line here. He pretty much has to hit here. And most of the time, I'm going to end up blocking. Um, and Nigel knows that. Nigel knows that he's not going to get it. You know, if I can, I'm going to be playing somewhere over here, and he's going to probably have to hit this lane. It's kind of a tough play. I'm not in love with Oud because of the fact that I'm going to be blocking across here so often. But I don't mind the play because what are his options? He can play Kowleen, keep O when he needs to bingo. just doesn't really make any sense. He could play something like OI over here, but the leaf's just terrible. Um, he could play EAU, I guess. But there's just such a big difference between A E I L N and you know what would that keep? E A U would keep L I N O. Just such a big difference in leave that it just it doesn't seem worth the difference in positioning. I mean E A U is a lot better because of this lane and this lane. It's gonna be a lot harder to block everything, but sometimes you just have to take the risk.
So normally in this position, I would be blocking. Uh, a, A, B, E, I, Q, S. And Nidal just fished off two bells on a board that there aren't very many bingo lines on. So you'd be playing over here somewhere, just blocking this R and this A and this R and G and O. But in this case, it's not worth it uh, because I have QI for 34 points and I have no other good scoring plays and all my blocking plays use my S. And AABES is a pretty good leave, especially considering the pool. Uh, it's pretty consonant heavy. And I have AB or BE over here next turn, even if they bingo at worst. You know, they're not going to block that. So I'm better off just outrunning their bingo and playing QI. So Nigel's down 79 points here, but he has a bingo. He has several bingos, actually. He can play inhaled here. He can play nail head through the A, either starting here or starting here. And he can play hardline. Now, this is pretty complicated for a lot of reasons. Uh, we can eliminate inhaled here fairly quickly. You don't want to leave this sort of parallel open. You don't want to leave plays across here. Um, it's going to be fairly easy to blot the board regardless of what you do here. It's just, it's not worth leaving that sort of scoring opportunity when, you know, you're almost certainly going to be behind by 40, maybe even more points next turn. Uh, we can also eliminate nail head here. Uh, this, leaving the AD here is probably not going to be a good idea considering my range here. There's a ton of, the Z is definitely my range um, and will punish you very fiercely. Um, the H, you know, it's LH here, which means that you're not going to really get these as bingo lines. Uh, they're not going to score anything, and they're going to be hard to hit. And the EAD is just not going to be there, so you're going to have the L and the H for 60-point bingos, and the R, this R, this R, and this G. And they're going to be blocked soon, and they're not going to score that much either. And you're going to basically have one shot at it. You, you don't really want to do that. You want to kind of leave... If you can, this lane's gonna be very hard to block. So you kinda of wanna leave the space open a little bit. Um, if you can. You'd like to you just wanna keep as many options open as possible. So that leaves nail head here. Nail head here is problematic because it leaves an S hook. But most of those plays aren't gonna score that much, and you're keeping the board a little bit more open in terms of creating lines here or creating lines you know, this way and creating this whole space to bingo with. Problem is that the S hook here, and there's four S's and they're very likely, there's no reason why I didn't have an S last rack. Um, there's not really any reason I didn't have an S the rack before either. So, you know, it's not, giving your opponent 40 plus point plays for free is just not generally a great thing, but um, Hard, it scores six more points than Hardline. Now, Hardline is problematic. It's it's a word knowledge deal. Um, it's, you know, it leaves all sorts of lines open here. It leaves this line open, leaves this line open, leaves this line open. This can all be blocked at one time. Just play through the R or the G. So it's not that great. Um, but just leave this open. Uh, leaves the, the LI here is probably going to stay open really depends on Nigel's opinion on whether I'm going to know hard lines and hardliner are both not words because they're both fairly plausible. Uh, hardliner certainly is used all the time. You know, somebody's a hardliner if they refuse to break from, you know, their stereotypical position it's used in politics a lot. And hardline just sounds like, you know, a word that takes an S and maybe a type of line. It's not, it's just an adjective. Uh, just describe somebody who's stubborn. And I, I actually do know that. But if you think there's a good chance that they might not know that, then hardline might be worthwhile. Especially since it doesn't give away you know, immediate easy comebacks. So I would have I would have played hardline. Um, maybe hope my opponent doesn't know you know, doesn't know whether the hooks are good or not. If not, it's certainly not a bad play even without that. But Nigel decided to play Nailhead. 
Uh, seems very very reasonable play if you are certain that your opponent is going to know all the hooks to hard lines or hard line, namely that there aren't any. So I want five, and I have A A B E E N S. Now there's three S's in the pool, and you just choose seven tiles. And the pool is very scoring heavy. There's a you know there's a lot of highest point tiles: B H K V W Z P. I I don't want to give my opponent forty free points. I I have to take this spot. Um. This looks pretty straightforward, but it's it's really not. And you actually end up with the same play, but the pool is very constant heavy. There are 10 vowels in the pool. There's an A, there's four E's, three I's, and two U's. And there's, you know, nine, there's 18 consonants. All of them are pretty high scoring consonants, which makes it even worse because you know, to play a V, you need probably two vowels, just for an example. So normally, I would lean towards keeping more vowels than not. So I would think about playing something like beans or something like that. Uh, even though it keeps AE, keeping AE with this pool is actually a pretty good idea. Uh, the problem is, you know, But there's this with this particular pool, it's actually a lot better to play a base, which is normally what you keep with a normal pool. The reason for that is because of all of the of this a being pretty good thing here. Um, there aren't a lot of letters or a lot of words in this pool that really hit this a hard because of the fact that there's not very many vowels and not a lot of low scoring tiles. Whereas I'm keeping NE, uh, which is you know, it's not the greatest leave ever, but with this A open, it's very, very useful. Um, especially the N. The E, not so much. There's four E's left. I can draw another E. It's not that. But the N is really useful. You can draw a lot of things very easily. If I had the T instead of the N, I wouldn't be playing a bass. I would be playing, you know, beats or something like that. Maybe beast. I, I don't really know. But the N allows you to play, to draw things like a Zahn, a Keen, a Venz, a Zine. You know, all just all sorts of stuff in a pool where it's really pretty hard to draw something to the A. But having that N... You know, there's one end left, and I guess he could have it, but then he has to have, you know, some other things to go with it. It's just, it's a lot, it, it's kind of like a setup. It's an indirect setup, really, where you're hoping to draw a lot of things. But I'm a lot more likely to benefit from, from this A than Nigel is. And because of that, a base is a much better play than base or beans or anything else. So Nigel's down 45, and he has A-E-H-L-S-S-U. Now, this is a pretty interesting play for a few reasons, and there's actually a lot of options here. Um, so Nigel, okay. First option's Lush. Keeps A-E-S, which is pretty decent, with especially with this pool. He has the last A. Um... You know, keeps this. He gives this as a bingo line, which is pretty good. Um, and yeah, it is. It Nigel probably is gonna have the bingo to win this game, so that's certainly not a bad option. This is kind of a weak bingo lane, but it's certainly there. He can certainly create more bingo lanes. And I'm gonna need to score, so it's gonna be pretty hard for me to actually block this without creating more lines um, myself. You know, I guess I can play something like, I don't know, W-E-E -E here or something like that. But, I mean, most of the time, if I don't, especially if I don't have the W, I guess the B too, I'm not going to be able to actually parallel here, so this line's going to stay open. He can do something more aggressive. He can play H-U-E here. Uh, that keeps, certainly keeps the best leave. 
uh, it's gonna be you know there's four T's out so me paralleling over here is possible but I'm probably not gonna score for any points doing that um, it's certainly a possibility it, it does block off his option to do something like this later and it blocks off his option to make you know hooks and blocks this off blocks off the potential like PIT and PIN plays over here um, and of course I could just have the last S myself and then I could score a lot here and basically really hurt his winning chances. So this might be a little bit too aggressive. Uh, and yeah, I mean he could play Hughes, kind of the same play. Uh, pretty much the same problems, although him scoring heavily over here is much less of an issue, especially since I'm scoring a lot better too. There's 28, I'm only down 17 after this. And the Lee's better too. Um, you know, a better chance of drawing the blank. You know, I could definitely hit bingos over here. Um, and the last option is what Nigel plays. He plays Dulce. And this is more of an attempt to try to outscore me. You know, AHS is a pretty good leave here for scoring, but he's behind too much to really catch up all too often. Nevertheless, I guess I could have a bad rack here. You know, I just played five five tiles off. Even the tiles that I played off when I keep EN, you can always draw badly with. And he has, you know, his own scoring options. He has ALS, or I'm sorry, AHS. You know, SH plays are going to score here. They're going to score all over the place, really. So he's not going to have trouble scoring. He's just going to have a lot of trouble stopping me from scoring. Um, I would probably end up playing... I don't know, this seems okay. I, I'm a little bit skeptical of trying to outscore somebody in this position just because of how many open possibilities there are here and here and here. and Just all sorts of stuff. It's going to be pretty hard to stop me from scoring. And, and I'm up... 16 and a turn, so it's going to be pretty tough. So I'd probably end up playing Lush. I might play Hughes, but this H really isn't that much of a threat. I'd probably end up playing Lush and trying to you know, stop some of the bingos. So here I'm up 16, but I hit the aforementioned Azine for 72. Um, Nevertheless, just because you hit something like this doesn't mean you necessarily have to play it. I would certainly th think about playing something like up bow over here, maybe wob. Um, problem is that the A is just going to get blocked too often. It's not going to get blocked that often, but it's. And if I knew it was never going to get blocked, or if I had some sort of backup play, like let's say that um, NI was a word, so I could play Z. Z E I N over here as a backup. Might be worth thinking about actually foregoing it, but I don't. I mean, then backup play is Zin, and that's just not that great. If he hits, you know, if he hits an A play himself, which is rare but possible with this pool, or the real disaster, him hitting a bingo over here, um, you know, I really can't deal with that very well. So because of that, I have to play Azine. Uh, I don't necessarily have to, like I said, if it were if there were almost no chance of it being blocked, then this wouldn't be necessary. But that's not the case here. So now Nigel's down by 88, which is dangerous because now he has to score and bingo. So he really doesn't have a lot of options here. Um, Normally you'd like to fish, you'd like to play off something like AI or maybe H A, you know, maybe HI, but at worst, uh, HAI or something like that, but Nigel needs to score. He needs to score and bingo, and leave lines open so, you know, so that he can bingo, and it's going to be pretty difficult, especially since I'm going to be able to block fairly well next turn. Um, so no need to play AH here. You know, EIIST isn't the best ever, but you know, it's something, but then I'm just gonna block. 
probably gonna play across here or something like that. He's gonna have a really difficult time. Especially since AH blocks this PI hook here, which is something that he probably wants to use. Um, especially if I end up using the S somehow, ideally for him here. Then they could play like PIT or something like that, and then block, you know, and then bingo across, something like that, some scenario. Uh, but he decides to play Sith, and I actually agree with him. He needs to stay in range. He needs to draw very well. Probably draw the blank and some stuff with it. And hopefully either bingo or set up a bingo opportunity or set up a shot to fish through ALS. Or if I block, if I play a three here to try to hit a nine, something like that. Um, it's not much, but it's something. This is a common mistake that I see a lot of people do. I see a lot of people trying too hard to bingo here and not doing enough to make sure that the bingo actually wins the game. Uh, whenever you fish, you need to actually make sure your bingo works um, in terms of what you're trying to do. So if he fished for 18 points and then bingoed, it, it, he just wouldn't win nearly often enough. Um, for example, if you played hit here, uh, 10, that's that's 18 points, he's going to be down by 70. Now, assuming I don't have the W or the S or the blank and I don't block it, um, I'm still going to score more than enough points and his bingo, even to the triple, is probably not going to be enough. So I agree with Sith, he needs to score enough so that if he does bingo he can win the game. 